So we have a no cooling call here. A repeat customer. We were here six months ago. You might remember uh, this video. I did a video on it. Uh, we were here, like I said, six months ago. And uh, the suction line solder joint was leaking. The, the house was only like three days old at that point. And it's freezing up again six months later. So let's go take a look. All right, if you guys remember, we have a very bottom of the barrel Nordine unit here with a really long model number. And with those print parameters right there, this system should not have frozen unless the contactor got stuck. And that's what I'm gonna look for right now. Oh. Or it, it, it is a mobile home, but the mobile home air handlers are, are now coming with uh, ECM X13 fan motors or unless that thing stopped working. So that's gonna be one of my two guesses here is that either we got a contactor sticking or the X13 motor quit temporarily. But she left the fan in the own position and it was running when I got here. So, uh, they put that fitting right away. All right, let's uh, pull the disconnect. Okay, the whole damn panel came off. And let's see if we can, uh, if we can get this cover off. There used to be, yeah. if I break the damn cover, to be honest with you. All right, I've got the cover off. No, contactor's in perfect shape. The points in that contactor are fine. I'm gonna plug it back in. I'm gonna give it 10 minutes to run and stabilize. Okay. We will rule that one as inconclusive. Filter's clean. Contactor is not in bad shape. I don't see any reason it would have welded shut. <coughs> Coil's clean. It's a brand new house, but I did check all this. The blower motor is running fine for me. I asked her when it was frozen if she remembers if she could hear the blower inside, and she said yes. She said she, she remembers going up, looking at the coil, seeing it frozen, and she could see and hear the blower turning. So we'll call this one inconclusive. I told her if it does it again to call me on the phone right away so that I can walk her through a couple things, you know. Okay, is the indoor fan running? Yes, okay. Um, or let's say she would say no, and I'll say, okay, go to the outside, see if the outside's running. And then, you know, maybe she'll say, yes, it is, but the fan, so we could have a contactor getting welded shut. 
Uh, you know, I just, I, I, I can't troubleshoot something that I don't see. Look, I'm not afraid of criticism or anything. Now, if you're gonna be a dickhead, you know, you can keep your comments to yourself. But if you have some ideas for me on what to come back over here and look for, I'm open to suggestions. Let me tell you guys something. Just because I don't reply to your comments does not mean I don't read them. Believe it or not, I, I read probably every one of them that comes in because I have an app through YouTube that, you know, it's, it's my studio app. It tells me my analytics and comments that are coming in and blah, blah, blah. So I do read your comments even though I don't reply, mainly because there's so many comments I don't have time to reply to them all. And please understand that I do appreciate your comments and they are read just because they're not always answered. They are most definitely read. So if you have a suggestion, I'm all ears. Um, but right now that system is cooling fine. I let it run for 15 minutes and stabilize, make sure nothing, you know, out of the ordinary happen. I found everything to be fine. Ever since I made the repair on the solder joint, the repair is still good. We have not lost a drop of refrigerant since I've been, since last time I was here six months ago. So now she's telling me, you know, her air filter's clean today and you can tell it's brand new. Did she have a plugged up air filter and she's not telling me? Could be, a lot of customers won't admit it. Even though I told her, hey, I'm not gonna get mad at you. I, really, I hope that's all it is. Did you have a dirty air filter? She says no. So we gotta take her word for it. When we all know in reality, more than likely, that's probably what this was. All right, guys, well, it's the next day and we are headed back to that job. Um, it froze again, she sent me a picture. The only thing I could think of is the TXV is uh, acting up, causing it to freeze. I mean, we y'all saw the pressures uh, earlier in the video. We definitely don't have a refrigerant leaking issue. Uh, mobile home, basic 14 sear. I catch a lot of heat for this. So we're gonna go ahead and clear this up right now. I am headed over there. I'm gonna take the TXV out and I'm gonna put a piston. For all you guys out there that say, oh man, you took a TXV out and put a piston. You just ruined the efficiency of that unit and you voided the warranty. Man, look, to the guys that say that, I'm sorry, but man, y'all are, y'all are idiots. Goodman still comes with a piston. Hell, you can still get ICP air handlers with a piston. You cannot get cased coils from ICP with them, but you can get air handling units with pistons in them. It does not ruin the efficiency, okay? It's basic 14 sear. I'm sorry, but that expansion valve is not doing uh, that much more in sear rating, okay? And plus, these expansion valves are just not reliable like they used to be back in the day. Look, I don't hate expansion valves. I know they're needed and they and they have their place. I would never do this on a 16 sear or something like that. But we're talking a basic 14 sear mobile home. That thing's probably not even getting 14 sear even with the damn expansion valves. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give these people reliability. They're, you know, this they've only been in this house for six months and they're having nothing but trouble. I mean, I had to go three days after the AC was installed uh, and I'll try to put uh, one of the, uh, a link to that video at the end of this video, you know, one of the clickable videos there at the end to the to that video. I, you know, I had to go fix a solder joint because the guy left the leaking solder joint. So the AC has been nothing but trouble for them since they've got in this house. So I'll have to give her an invoice today and she'll get reimbursed again. But she doesn't want that other guy back out there. So I'm gonna try to get these this lady some reliability. I'm not worried about, you know, losing a seer. As you, I'm telling you, you're not gonna lose a whole seer, okay? And we're sure not gonna void the warranty. I can promise you that. So anyway, we will, uh, we're on the interstate and we will, uh, We'll see you guys when we get there. All right, 
here we are. We're back at our Nordine. It is a four ton. I was right about that. We're gonna we're gonna rehook up before we uh, pump. Well, we can't pump down because of micro channel, but we're gonna rehook up and check pressure, superheat, temperatures, and all that before we move forward. But I mean, it's gonna do the same thing it did the other day to her. I'm gonna leave and it's gonna freeze up again. But just for shits and giggles. Okay. Got a, I got a good piece of copper right there. Oh, the pressure's going down. Maybe, maybe it'll act up for me today. Okay, she had the cover off the blower. So now let's see what it's doing. Okay, so things are settling back. The cover is over the blower. I wonder if I still have the film on this screen because every time I point my camera at it, the uh, the camera like it, it doesn't pick it up good. But I could have sworn I peeled the film off of this thing. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, we're definitely above freezing and still coming up. We have a nine degree subcooling with a 32 degree superheat. So that tells you right there, your TXV is not working. But it's at this temperature, it should not freeze. Line temperature is 73. So I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that we have a TXV issue here. And that's why this thing freezes up on her. I mean, right now, I see no reason that it should freeze up. But I don't know what it does after it runs for two or three hours. And I'm not going to sit here for two or three hours and babysit this damn thing. As you can see, our coil pressure, our coil temperature is getting even better. Um, so that's definitely not going to freeze. I'm gonna I'm gonna proceed with the repair that I uh, intended to do in the first place.
it is. And I left the piston in the truck. Schrader and cap. I left the piston in the truck. So go get it and then we'll pull this up. And there's the brand name NTK coils. Four ton. Not familiar with these. Got the piston. Teflon seal. Okay. Ooh, that thing is not giving me any room. All right, got the vacuum going, just pulling it through the manifold. And I'm using my cheater cord to steal power. So uh, we're gonna let the vacuum finish and uh, I'm definitely gonna have to add charge because I can't pump down a micro channel, but what I did do is, is close the valves and trapped as much as I could in the condenser and then had to recover the rest. So, I, and I'm not gonna add that old Freon back. I'll just put fresh virgin Freon. I mean, she's paying me and she's gonna get reimbursed from the mobile home company anyhow, so. Okay, vacuum is already pulling down nicely. Even though we are just using the manifold, it's not like we did a major repair. I mean, so I'm happy. And uh, we'll let this vacuum pull a little longer and then, you know, we'll go from there. All right, as you saw from the screenshot, I got about two and a half pounds in here and we are already looking much better. Uh, the coil temperature is definitely above freezing. Our suction line temperature is still warm. We want to see that super heat fall a little bit and we're going to give that a few minutes down. It looks like it wants to fall. I'm very confident that we have a successful repair. Once I have the target super heat where I want it, I will uh, check airflow temperature readings, but I'm, pretty confident this one is taken care of. Return temperature. Eighty-eight degrees. 
see what the wet bulb is so I can calculate the target superheat. Seventy four point three. Back to regular temperature. Eighty eight and a half. Let's go to a supply. Closest one's going to be this one. I'll get back with y'all. We have a 16. Let me press that button again. Come on, baby. There we go. A 16 degree split so far. Two more degrees would be 18. But it's extremely hot in here. Let's just see what the room temperature is. Almost 80 degrees in here with 77% relative humidity. Yeah, see, it's warming up. See, it's going up. It's that cold air is coming off of it from the vent. I'll get back to y'all. All right. We now have an 18 degree temperature split. And it's still dropping. Okay, that's looking better. Okay, so I came back out here and my superheat was down to like one. Uh, it's going up now. The target is 25. So I uh, dumped a little bit of gas out in the recovery jug, and now my superheat's coming back up. So we're going to let that settle in at the target, and then we'll, we're we going to check airflow again. I'm not going to film all that again, but um, we had an 18-degree split uh, when I walked out of the house. So we're going to adjust the superheat and check it again. Uh, they went off. All right, removed a little bit more charge. Superheat's coming up. It might take a little more, but we're gonna let it run and stabilize. But I got a feeling that this will be fine. I think if I take any more out, then my superheat's gonna go too high. So we'll keep a close eye on this. But I'm pretty happy with this repair. Uh, I believe this is gonna do her just fine. All right, so as we pull away from these very very nice people's house for the again i feel very confident that we uh that i was able to remedy the situation i stayed here with it for a while i took more temperature readings uh we ended up with a final of another 18 degree split now of course the return temperature had dropped and the supply temperature had dropped which is what you want to see as the house cools down of course the return temperature will drop and the supply temperature will drop. So I'm happy. We, uh, they have just one of them basic uh, switch action uh, jump mobile home thermostats. We discussed thermostats. Uh, she wanted to discuss Wi-Fi thermostats. So we did that. And uh, I look, it's not freezing up. You can, actual, you can actually feel the house cooling down now her more so than me because you know she's been fighting with this and i'm in the heat anyway so anything feels good to me uh any kind of cool air feels good to me but she told me several times while we were talking oh yeah i could definitely feel it cooling down the, they've had some issues with this mobile home company i know in the first video they I, I said that they looked like they had found a good one but that turned out to not be true uh 
um, you know, when you just making a close and a sale three days old, they're gonna treat you good, but it's been a nightmare. That last repair that I did, uh, she still hasn't been reimbursed for that, which I couldn't believe. They told her they were cutting the check right then and there. And then, uh, you know, she said, so she's not even gonna try to get reimbursed on this one. But she likes me and uh, she said, I've, you know, I respond, I come out, take care of her. So what all can you do? I do, you know, but I'm very confident and I'll be back next week to put a thermostat on. She wants me to send her all kind of different Wi-Fi thermostat uh, pictures of them, of uh, ones that I recommend with pricing. And then her and her significant other are going to pick a thermostat and I'm gonna come back next week and install it and I will double check charge and everything again. But I feel so confident that I remedied the problem, I went ahead and collected her. If I, when I'm dealing with a unit like that and I have to, you know, you know, you're doing some troubleshooting and a little bit of guesswork also, you know, cause sometimes, you know, there, it, there is a little bit of guesswork in it. And I'm not afraid to say that, you know, sometimes you're like, golly, you know, you know, it could be a few things, but you take a shot. Normally when I'm fighting a unit like that, I will not collect the customer until the problem is, is remedied, uh, until the problem is remedied. So basically I take that back. I would collect them, but I would, I'd tell them to write me a check and I would not cash it or deposit it un until, you know, at least two or three days and I call back and say, hey, how's the unit doing? Oh, you got it, it it's doing great. Then I would deposit the check. If they say, well, I want to pay you with a credit card, I'd say, okay, well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run your credit card right now. Let's wait a couple days, make sure we got the problem solved. Then I'll call you and get a credit card number. I've never had an issue with people like that. I, I'm a pretty good judge of character. I know I, I know who to do that to and who not to do that to, trust me. But I was so confident that I got this unit fixed that I didn't even offer her that, that situation. I went ahead and collected my money. So I'm, uh, again, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that the problem is fixed. But to be safe, I'm coming back next week to put a thermostat on and I get to double check everything. And that'll even make me feel even better. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And um, look, if you don't like that I took a valve out and put a piston in, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't need to hear about it in the comments. I don't wanna hear you guys crying about efficiency and all that other crap. Keep it to yourself, move on. Stop being a, uh, stop trying to be a super tech. Ain't nobody out here a super tech. Not me, not nobody. Nobody in the past on YouTube. I don't give a shit if it was Ralph, Zach, none of them, Steve Lav, ain't none of us super techs. We're all good technicians, but ain't none of us a super tech. We can all make a mistake and we all do things to satisfy our customers. So all you super techs out there that wanna leave those nasty comments about taking a valve out and putting a piston and how it's wrong and blah, 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 blah. You can just stop typing and move on to the next video. And if you don't like that I do that, there's a very simple solution. Don't watch my videos. To all my loyal subscribers and friends and fans and everything, thank you for, uh, for the continued support. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.